Right, I'm just going to look at the um, the complementary AC video for the Finercy and its relative inaccuracies um, compared to the DC one that I've already done. Um, so basically what I've got going on here, I've got a 27 volt RMS power supply. I've got both probes connected to one side and the earth clips connected to the other so they both have the same reference as which as I explained in the previous video you have to do that on the Finercy for them for both um, inputs to have the same relative measurement because unlike most other oscilloscopes the grounds aren't connected because this is a non-main scope it's driven by USB um, from my laptop so the only possible link it might have to the mains is through my the power supply of my laptop, which I don't even know if that's actually earthed or whether that's isolated. Um, so essentially, you would, in principle, be floating and have uh, isolation possibly, but you'd have to double check that. So basically, what uh, I wanted to absolutely put to bed first of all is the differences between the scopes, because I was very wary of the actual, obviously we know from the DC measurements that have been done that the meter has percentage errors, anything from 2.75% up to say 6 I think uh, measured on the 60 volt scale when I had the power supply attached. So I'm going to look at the AC equivalence of that, of, of the meter, of the unit rather, um, to see, get an idea of it, if the figures are similar for AC. So first of all, on a 27 volt RMS power supply output. Um, if you did the calculation for that, it's actually, I'm reading on this, which is a true RMS reader, meter on the 200 volt range AC. This is reading 26.8 volts RMS. So if we did 26.8, multiply that by square root of 2, we should get If I can get the decimal point in the right place, 26 point, 26 point 8 times square root of 2 gives an RMS peak of 37.9 volts. So I've got the channels set up so that they're on the one times probe and the one times probe setting. So, and I've auto ranged this so. All that the scope can do in any mode is do its minimal, its, its, its maximum uh, voltage per division, which for this unit is only 5 volts per division. Which, as you can see from the center line, you've only got 5, 10, 15, 20. The maximum it can show of any reading is up to 20 volts each side of the center line because it's only got the maximum voltage per division on the one to one and the one times pro scale of five volts per division. So they just, you know, they haven't built in, you know, a better quality resistor divider and the associated electronics to be able to read higher voltages. Although in the documentation, well, on the front here it says all inputs equals one mega ohms, which is a maximum of 400 volts. So that implies to me that you would be able to actually input up to 400 volts real voltage into this unit but I said I wouldn't tr I just don't trust that you know that could be a mistake I don't know um, but I just don't I don't know I just don't trust the Chinese in getting their figures right in this t type of scenario but anyway the upshot of it is the screen itself and the way the meter is designed the, the units designed it's it can only show you a maximum of 40 volts um, peak to peak or from zero to to 40 volts DC as we saw in the last video. So if you wanted to view this uh, output waveform in its entirety obviously we'd have to go to the 10 times probe scale which you can see there which divides uh, the actual voltages peaks and RMS voltages by 10 so now it's the RMS voltage would be reading 2.85 volts. So obviously you'd have to then change that on each scale and move it to the 10 times probe, which effectively all that does is multiply these figures that it gives you by 10 to give you a real actual reading, which as you can see, the RMS voltage here 
is actually 28.5 volts in comparison to the 26.7 that's being read by my tr more trusty um, British Telecom meter. So now you can see that what the value should be if we take this as the actual more accurate reference 26.8 would have a peak of actually 37.9 and it's actually telling the unit saying that it's actually got a peak value which is here it's set to voltage peak of 40.7 so the difference 40.7 to 37.9 um, is 2.8 volts so that's the error so if we did like we did the other day the 2.8 volts um, on a, tw uh, a 39 let's call it for the sake of, let's go by this one because it doesn't really you know it's not going to make that much difference um, we could do uh, that's that's 2.8 volts difference um, divided by the 40 volt range say um, which is 0 0.07 so you'd multiply that by 100 to get the percentage error and it's seven percent on only a 40 volt input which compared to the DC uh, side that we did the other day I think it's that's higher uh, it's, a, it's a worse percentage error obviously on the peaks um, so if you did if we went to peak to peak on that um, move that up to peak to peak we can see we're getting um, 81.5 volts so to work out the difference of that but we'd be reading 26.9 or 8 whatever doesn't really matter 26.8 multiplied by the square root of 2 which gives the peak RMS value as we've just seen at 38 volts near as damn it and so you'd multiply that by 2 to get the peak to peak value and that's actually 76.08 so 76.1 volts and this is saying that a peak to peak value would be 81.5 volts on one channel and in fact the other channel is only reading 78.6 so you can actually see there's a discrepancy between the actual input channel so you, you'd have to also account for the differences in the probe values that you know could be slight differences in they're not going to be quality probes so you're going to have a difference in the resistors that, that are inside here the the one meg and the nine meg that make up the 10 meg ohm divided chain to be able to do the 10 times reduction so on the blue channel it's actually reading 78.6 volts um, as a peak value but on the yellow channel and they're both attached to the same side of the winding uh, coming out of the, the power supply so you've actually got 82.5 and 78.6 well let's keep 79.6 it's bouncing around a little bit so we've got about just over two volts difference between the actual channels so but peak to peak value we've actually got let's go by the yellow channel we'd have 81.5 volts and the actual RMS voltage according to this if you did the calculation would be 76.1 so we've got a difference between 76.1 and 81.5 so we've got a five uh, about 5.4 volt difference there on 81 volts so 5.4 volts divided by 81.5 multiplied by 100 and again we get 6.6 .6, which is you know you'd expect that because it's the same as the as the peak value or peak to peak value because all it's doing is doubling it the, but the percentage error is still going to be the same across the, the doubling the voltage scale because the error each side is going to be the same so, again, you know, just to um, basically put the unit in perspective of the sort of percentage errors up to whatever voltage range you're going to be reading is just to, to be aware of them, really. But the main thing also was for me to put to bed with this unit so that I'm happier to use it knowing its limitations is looking at the symmetry of the two uh, sides which we know that they're reading a slight voltage difference on this particular scale. Um, and it's now obviously because we've gone to 10 times um, 
division really, it's, although it's called 10 times, it's actually a, a divider when you go to the 10 times because obviously it divides the actual input voltage by 10 so that it can actually reduce the signal coming into the unit so that it can fit on the screen. So you can't go below more than 50 volts per division. So again, you'd read 10 times what you could on the 5 volt range. So you'd have um, you know, your 50, 100, 150, 200 volts maximum, which would be 400 volts peak to peak across the whole screen. The same for DC. Um, so one other curiosity here, which now, if just to show this while the power supply is actually attached, uh, just to show what can happen with, let's put these two earth clips together so that they have the same reference, the two ground clips on each probe, but attach the probes to one side of the power supply and one the other so that we get the phase relationship between the two. And now if I auto range that, um, we see a, a slight phase difference on this power supply. So I just wanted to point that out as something reasonably sort of half interesting. Um, which if, uh, I don't know if you can see, if I put the center of each one, there's a tiny phase difference. It's not that much, but it, it is there. So if we went back to the times 10 probes, let's see if we can see that. So you can certainly see that they're out of phase, which is obviously what you'd expect from one side of a transformer and the other, but they're not actually exactly 180 degrees out of phase, you can see here. The peak of this one isn't in line with the peak of this one. So this transformer is uh, obviously you know, showing that slight phase difference that you get when you're measuring across two sides of an inductor.